Do you find spring a difficult time of year for planning backpacking trips? Unpredictable weather and variable trail conditions can make it very challenging, but having the right gear can make it not only easier, but safer and more comfortable to backpack in the spring. To help you guys out with that, today we're looking at my lightweight spring gear loadout for an overnight backpacking trip. First up, let's talk about my pack. This is the REI Flash 55 pack, and it has a few different features that I really like that make it great for springtime. First of all, the brain is waterproof. So you can put all of your water sensitive gear items up there like your cell phone, your first aid kit, your poop kit, your battery charger, anything that you don't want to get wrecked by a rain, put up in this brain. The rest of the pack isn't waterproof, but it is water resistant. So it's going to repel just light drizzles. But if you get caught in a downpour, you're going to need something to keep everything inside the pack dry. And we have something that we're going to talk about a little bit later in order to take care of that. The other thing I really like about the Flash 55, and you guys will be familiar with this if you follow the channel, and that's the water bottle pockets. These two water bottle pockets are situated in front of the side pockets and it just makes it a lot easier to reach back, grab some water, take a sip of water and then put the water bottle back in the pocket. In order to carry water, I use two smart water bottles. So we just have those two right here. I use the smart caps on the top so it's just a little bit easier to drink out of. On this side pocket here, on the right hand side, I have spikes. These are black diamond spikes. They're super lightweight and super small. They only have spikes on the front. Most of the time I don't need spikes. So I like to have something that's nice and lightweight and compact. So it's not taking up a lot of room in my pack and I'm not carrying weight that I don't often use. But when you do need spikes, they are super important and something that I always pack with me in the springtime. In the other hip belt pocket, I keep snacks and I ate them also just garbage in there. In the left side pocket, I have my chair. This is the Helinox Chair Zero. Really nice just to get up off the ground. A lot of the time in the spring, the ground is wet or saturated. So being able to sit up off the ground is really nice and it helps your back a little as well. And we're all getting a little bit older day by day. As you can see strapped underneath the brain, I have a Nemo Switchback foam mat. So this is just an accordion style mat. And I use this for two different things. First of all, I put it on my chair when I'm sitting down because it does get colder in the spring and it's nice to have a little bit of insulation so your butt doesn't get cold. And then I also put it underneath my sleeping pad. The ground in the spring is usually either frozen or very saturated with water, which makes the ground really cold and sucks the heat from you through your sleeping pad. So it's good to double up on sleeping pad insulation, especially if you don't have a super warm sleeping pad. And then in the front stretchy pocket here, I keep a few other things. I have my Visp rain jacket. So this is a new rain jacket for me from Enlightened Equipment. It's just a little bit better than Frog Togs, a little bit more durable, a little bit thicker. It's also quite lightweight and has pit zip. So it's nice to have that mechanical ventilation so you're not overheating. And I found this to be quite breathable as well as pretty durable. As well back here, I keep my water filter. Sometimes in the spring, all the creeks are frozen. So I'm not always filtering water, but when I do have to, I'm using the Platypus Quick Draw. This has just been the best and most robust water filter that I've encountered to date. And then on the other side pocket, I have my poop kit. I keep the poop kit in this cute Space Bear bags. I'll have links in the video description, all this gear if you wanna check it out. And in here I have my trowel. So I use the Vargo Dig Dig trowel. Sometimes the ground is a little bit frozen. So it's really nice to have a super robust trowel and it has serrated edges if I need to cut through roots. Then I have hand sanitizer, some wet wipes. And then I also have a wag bag in here. Sometimes the ground is completely frozen and I can't dig through it. So I need to be using a wag bag and carrying my poop out. Before we dive into the pack, let's take a look at what I have in the brain. This is usually, like I said, where I keep things that I don't want to get wet because the brain of the pack is waterproof. My first aid kit. I have my ditty bag here. So I got a bigger ditty bag because I found I was having to really stuff everything into my old one. This one's made by Napax. It's really nice. I have my foldable toothbrush in here, my Nightcore NU 5000 battery bank. So because I'm on an overnighter, I didn't need a big battery bank. Some drugs, lip chap, a uh, little Bluetooth thermometer. So this is a Bluetooth thermometer I keep outside of my tent and I track the temperature over the course of the night. That helps me really dial in my sleep systems and see how my sleep system is performing under different conditions. And then as well, I have my Nightcore NU 25 headlamp here and some toothpaste tabs for brushing my teeth. I like toothpaste tabs more than the toothpaste tubes because I can allocate exactly how much I need. Also have my Flextail air pumps. This is just a super tiny pump. I use this to inflate my sleeping pad, but then it also has a light on the bottom here and I can just put this up in a pocket of my tent and provide some nice light over the course of the evening. I also have my satellite communicator slash SOS devices, the Garmin InReach Mini 2. Garmin updated the inReach for 2022 and there's some really nice updates. Then I have my wallet and my keys in here, which we're gonna leave in there so I don't end up losing them. Now let's dive inside of the pack. This is where all the 
the good stuff is. So starting right at the top, I have my Ursac. So bears are starting to wake up in the winter time. So I wanna be using a bear proof sack and hanging this away from my camp in the evening so that I'm not having to deal with any bears. Inside of here, I have my pot. This is the Evernew one liter titanium pasta pot. I have a little mini Bic lighter in there as well as my fuel canister. What's nice about this is that the one liter size is fairly compact, but it's still big enough that if I need to be melting snow because all the creeks are frozen, I can still do that pretty efficiently inside this pot. If I was bringing my 650 or 750 milliliter Tox pot, it'd be a little bit more difficult to melt snow. Then I also have my pink titanium long handled spoon. Great spoon, maybe the best spoon in the world. I have my titanium double walled insulated mug just for having a nice hot beverage. I have my stove. So this is the Pocket Rocket Deluxe from MSR. And what's nice about this is that it has a regulator. So stoves that have regulators just perform a lot better in lower temperatures. Often when I'm starting to get dinner ready, it's below freezing and stoves that don't have regulators do not work very well below freezing. And the Pocket Rocket Deluxe has just been an all around solid stove for me. It's probably my favorite stove out there right now. Then I have dinner for tonight. This is Bushka's Kitchen Hardy Harvest. Bushka's, Bushka's Kitchen makes some of my favorite meals. And I think this one's my favorite out of all of them. Just very delicious. And what's nice is that not only is it just really good meal that's comforting on a cold day, but it only takes three minutes to rehydrate. So you're not having to wait a whole bunch of time. And if it's really cold out, then that's not gonna be affecting this meal as much. And then I have breakfast for tomorrow in here as well in this Rusby bag. So these are just reusable bags that you can put boiling water into. And I like to put my oatmeal in here and that has a curved bottom to it, which acts as a nice little bowl. Next up, we have my tent. Durston X-Mid 2P tent. This is my favorite tent for springtime and most of the rest of the year as well. We'll get this set up and then I'll tell you why I think it's such a good tent for springtime. I also have my tent stakes in there and I also have a tarp. So this tarp from Hammock Gear is made of Silpoly. Like we'll talk about the tent, Silpoly is just a really good material for if it's humid or wet out because it doesn't hold on to a ton of moisture. In the springtime, depending on where you are, it could be raining all the time and to have a tarp to hide under or to hang out with your friends is just really nice. Everything else in the pack is part of my sleep system or clothing system, and it's all inside this Nilo Flume pack liner. So like I said, the pack is not waterproof. So I use this pack liner in order to protect everything that I want dry inside the pack. Right at the top, I have some camp booties. So these are camp booties from Mountain Equipment Company, and they are just really nice when it's cold out. They also have fairly water resistant bottoms. So if the ground is saturated or wet, then I'm not gonna be getting my socks all wet and soaking. And then I have my clothing. So this is all of my camp clothes. So it does get cold at night. So I have some pretty robust camp clothes systems in here. Everything else is part of the sleep system. So we'll get that unpacked into the tent and then share all of it with you. So for my sleep system here, I have the Nemo Tensor for my sleeping pads, this is the 2022 version with an R value of 4.2. In the springtime, I want a sleeping pad with that higher R value. And it was awesome that Nemo was able to update the tensor with a higher R value without increasing the weight. So now this is a really awesome sleeping pad and my go-to for shoulder season. My pillow is the Hikencher pillow. So this is a pillow with a pad strap. The pad strap keeps it locked down onto your sleeping pad. And then this one has a little bit of insulation on top. In the springtime, when it's a little bit colder, it's nice to have that little bit of insulation for your head. And then for my sleeping bag, yes, I said sleeping bag. I've been using the Sea to Summit Spark Force sleeping bag for my shoulder season adventures, springtime, fall. It's just a really warm sleeping bag for how lightweight it is. It has a minus 15 degrees Celsius limit rating, comfort rating to about minus nine degrees Celsius. For me with just thin base layers on, I can take this down to about minus six degrees Celsius and be nice and comfortable. If I add some fleece pants and a fleece sweater on, then I can take it a little bit colder down to about that comfort rating for the sleeping bag. If you're like me and like to use quilts instead of sleeping bags, then I highly recommend checking out the Catabatic Flex 22. I've been using it a bunch in really cold temperatures and it has a bunch of features that just allow it to perform in colder temperatures and in conditions that are a little bit humid and moist. And if you want a one person alternative to the X-Mid 2P, then check out the Six Moon De Designs Lunar Solo. It's also made with Sil Poly material. And the reason why Sil Poly is so good is because it doesn't sag when it's wet and doesn't absorb a ton of moisture. So in the springtime when it's raining, maybe a little bit more humid, you're not gonna have as many issues as you would with a tent made of Sil Nylon. The Lunar Solo is also a trekking pole tent. I like trekking pole tents because I find them really easy to set up. And then they're also very lightweight. What's nice about the Lunar Solo and the X-Mid is that everything is attached. So instead of having to pitch the inner and then put a fly over top of it like you would with a traditional tent, everything just goes up at one time. So if it is raining out, you're not going to be getting everything on the inside of the tent wet. If all this gear looks a little bit heavy for you, go check out this gear list right up there. It's all the gear that I finished the, my Great Divide Trail through hike last summer with. This gear killed it for 1,200 kilometers and 36 days on one of the toughest trails in the world.